So this is Gurumurthy Ramachandran again. Last time, we finished our discussion of the well-mixed room model and its variations. And if you recall, the well-mixed room model models the concentration of a pollutant in air in one room or one box. It is also referred to as a one-box model. Today, we are going to move on to another model called the near-field, far-field model. It is also modeling concentration in the room, except now the room is made up of two boxes, one within the other. And so sometimes it is also called as the two-box or the two-zone model. So in this section, we are going to introduce the two-zone model, you know, the conceptual picture of this model and the derivation of the equations describing this model. In the well-mixed room model, we have been assuming that the contaminant is dispersed instantaneously and uniformly throughout a room containing an emission source. And we assume that this room is perfectly mixed, even though we know that this is a physically unrealistic assumption. So what we are going to do in this next model is add a little bit more complexity to it. And we are now going to view the same room as containing two zones, a near field zone surrounding the emission source and a far field zone comprising the rest of the room. The two boxes, one within the other, are both perfectly mixed, just as in the case of the well-mixed room model. But there is some amount of air exchange between these two zones. And this will become clear in the next slide when I show you a conceptual picture. So what this means, though, is that the concentration of the contaminant is uniform throughout the near field zone and also throughout the far field zone. And in general, we expect that the near field concentration is higher than the far field concentration because we are nearer the source. So visually, we can imagine a picture such as the one shown on this slide. So the contaminant emission source is on a flat surface such as a table, and we can imagine a worker working on this table and the near field zone can be conceived as a hemisphere with its base on the surface of the table with its center at the source. And we can imagine that the worker is leaning over the table with his or her nose sticking into this imaginary hemisphere. The hemisphere radius is sized to contain the breathing zone of the individual whose exposure level is to be estimated. And air flows into and out of this near field at a rate of beta, which has units of cubic meters per minute. And this table is in a larger room, just as in the case of the well-mixed room model. And the room supply and exhaust air flows into and out of the far field at a rate of Q in cubic meters per minute. So how do we estimate the value of beta? We can do it in a couple of ways, but the easiest way to conceptualize this is to think of this free surface area of this hemisphere, which is imaginary, surrounding the source. So the free surface area denoted by FSA has units of area, so meter square, for example, and the air moves out of the room into this imaginary hemisphere and then from the hemisphere out into the rest of the room again. So if we have a hemisphere with a base on its surface, the surface area of this hemisphere is given by 2 times pi times the radius of the hemisphere squared. So that's one thing to keep in mind. At the interface of this near field, far field boundary, so which is the surface of the hemisphere, we can posit a random airspeed denoted by S in units of meters per minute. And it is assumed that the room air is in motion, but has no overall direction. So the air moves randomly in one direction or another. So the velocity is zero, but there is some random non-zero airspeed. In any small time interval, the air flows into the near field through one half of the free surface area of the hemisphere and flows out of the near field through the other half. So in a given portion of the free surface area, air cannot simultaneously move both ways. And so we can estimate the volumetric air 
flow into and out of the near field as a product of half of the free surface area, FSA, and the random airspeed, S. So beta is denoted by one half times the free surface area times the random airspeed. And the equality of the airflow rate into and out of the near field maintains a mass or volume balance of air in this zone. And this is analogous to the equality in the airflow rates Q into and out of the larger room. So let's do a quick example. So again, the same situation where we can imagine an imaginary hemisphere with its base on this table on which there is a contaminant source and the worker is working on this table with his or her nose just barely inside this hemisphere and breathing air from this hemisphere. We can imagine that this hemisphere has a radius r equal to the arm length of this adult human being. And so that is roughly 0.8 meters. The random air speed near this operation is roughly 10 feet per minute or three meters per minute, which is on average the air speed that you see in most rooms where there's not a directed air movement or a fan moving air through there. For the hemisphere geometry, the free surface area is 2 times pi times r squared, where r is equal to 0 0.8. So the surface area of this hemisphere is 4 meters squared. And so the volumetric airflow into and out of the near field is given by beta, is half times the free surface area times the random airspeed. So it's half times 4 meters squared times 3 meters per minute, or about 6 cubic meters per minute. This is a fairly simple calculation of how beta can be estimated by assuming an arm length of 0 0.8 meters for an adult person. Now let's get into the development of the model itself. So we have this larger room through which air is coming in and leaving at a rate of Q cubic meters per minute. We have the hemisphere inside it, so that's the inner box. There is a source inside the inner box with a generation rate of G milligrams per minute, as in the case of the well-mixed room model. There is some air coming from the outside box into the inside box at a rate of beta cubic meters per minute, and also leaving from the inner box to the outer box at the same rate beta. And as I've mentioned before, the two boxes are themselves well mixed. So the inner box has a concentration denoted by C and F, standing for near field, and the outer box has a concentration of C far field or FF. And what we are going to do, just as in the case of the well mixed room model, is to set up a mass balance equation for each one of these boxes and then solve that set of equations. Now we are going to set up the mass balance equation for both the near field and the far field. And just as in the case of the well mixed room model, we can say that the change in mass for each one of these boxes is equal to the mass gain of the contaminant in the air in that box minus the mass loss. So let's start off with the near field. And so we know that the volume of the near field box is denoted by V and F. And the change in concentration of the air in the near field is denoted by DC sub NF. So that product, V and F times DC and F, is the change in the mass of the contaminant in the air in the near field. And this is equal to the mass gain minus the mass loss. So what are the processes increasing the mass of the contaminant in the inside box? The first term is the contaminant source generating contaminant into the room air at a rate of G milligrams per minute times DT. So this has units of milligrams, the product of G and DT. The next term that is adding mass to the room air is the air coming from the outside box into the inside box. And so the product of these terms, beta, which has units of cubic meters per minute, times the concentration in the far field, 
which has units of milligrams per cubic meter, times the infinitesimal slice of time dt. The product of these three terms again has units of milligrams. And this is the contaminant coming in from the outside box into the inside box. So these two terms add mass to the inside box. What are the mass loss terms? So some of the contaminant in the inside box leaves and moves to the outside box. And that is denoted by the product beta, which units of cubic meters per minute, times CNF, which has units of milligrams per cubic meter, and DT, which has units of minutes. And so the product of these three terms, again, has units of milligrams. So the change in the concentration of the near field is equal to the mass gain terms minus the mass loss terms. We can now do a similar thing for the far field box, the outer box. Just as before, the volume of the far field is denoted by VFF. The change in the concentration of the far field is DC sub FF. And this is equal to the mass gain term. So what is the mass gain term? This is the mass coming from the inner box to the outer box. So that's beta times CNF times DT. And if you just look up at the equation above, the mass loss term above in the near field equation, you see that there is a minus sign there. So whatever is being lost from the inner box is being gained by the outer box. Likewise, we'll now look at the mass loss terms. And so there is some mass being lost from the outer box to the inner box. So there is a minus sign for beta times CFF times dt, and this corresponds to the mass gain in the inner box for the near field, beta times CFF times dt. So this is the same term appearing in both equations. And then the other mass loss term is just like in the well-mixed room model, we have contaminant leaving the outer box, leaving the room altogether. So that is the product of the overall room supply airflow rate Q times the CFF times DT. So this is the contaminant leaving the room altogether, the real room. So now we have two equations and there are two unknowns. So the unknowns are the concentration in the near field, CNF, and the concentration in the far field. And we assume that we know the generation rate and the ventilation rate through the room Q and the beta, which is sometimes referred to as the interzonal airflow rate or the airflow rate between the near and far field. And we also know the volume of the near field and the far field. So we have two equations in two unknowns, but we could solve them just as we solve the well-mixed room differential equation, except there is a complicating factor, which is that there are these terms that appear in both equations. So the beta times CFF times DT appears both in the near field and far field equation. And the same is true for the beta times CNF times DT, which also appears in both the near field and far field equation. So what we end up with are two coupled differential equations.